Namaste. I'm going to discuss and reveal in this video a secret that is so deep, so deeply buried, that I mean, basically the question never even comes up. It's certainly not discussed in the scriptures. Uh, and I've read quite a few scriptures, <laughs> and I didn't find it anywhere. And of course, the question is, where is Shiva Loka? Where is Vaikuntha? Where is heaven, Fardis, or whatever you want to call it? This blissful realm of happiness where everyone lives eternally and so on and so forth. Where are they? If it's a place, if it exists, it has to have a location, right? So where is it? And we just did a series on the Shiva Panchakshara Mantra. And the final verse, the Phala Shruti, that reveals the uh, result of chanting this mantra says, Ya pate chiva samnidao, shiva loka mavapnoti. This means that by chanting or reciting this mantra in the presence of Shiva, meaning the Shiva Lingam or a Shiva temple or even Shiva's devotees, that one attains Shiva Loka and enjoys spiritual life. What do you say? Shivana Sahamodate, that one enjoys spiritual life by the power of Shiva eternally. So, how is this possible? Where is this place? Huh? How do I get there? How do I buy a ticket? <laughs> well, of course, this is what spiritual life is all about. And we have been focusing on this channel into the four levels or states of consciousness. Svapna is dream consciousness. And this series is called Dream Time for a reason, that these places, they're really their states of being or states of consciousness, these transcendental heavenly places are in Swapna consciousness. And of course, as soon as you say this, everybody's going to say, but that means it's just a dream, just a dream. Well, now, let's, let's pull back a little bit, get a little perspective, and look at the teaching of the five bodies. The Anamaya Kosha, the food body, the Pranamaya Kosha, the energy body, the Manomaya Kosha, the mind body, the Vijnanamaya Kosha, the intelligence or will body, causal body, and finally, the Anandamaya Kosha, the consciousness body. These five bodies interpenetrate and move together and really are the essence of our life. So what happens when we go from Jagrat, external consciousness of the senses and the world and the body, to Svapna, mental consciousness or dream consciousness? Well, of course, even while we're in Jagrat, even when we're so-called awake, we have dreams, daydreams, fantasies, even what we call thinking, which is a dream of a conversation that we're having with, I guess, some kind of AI, <laughs> chatbot. <laughs> and we've been over that in our series on God GPT. Uh, and of course, actually, all this is a manifestation of God. It's all Shiva in one way or another. But there are different states, different degrees of manifestation. And the uh, Jagrat consciousness reveals the gross physical world through the senses of the gross physical body. But then the subtle physical body the energy body, pranamaya kosha. Where is that? Huh? 
Well, the Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, and Anandamaya Kosha are collectively known as the inner organ, the Antakarana. Antakarana means the subtle bodies, and the subtle bodies are the real self, the real being. The gross body is simply a temporary manifestation that lasts for a few years and then it falls off and you have to get a new one or whatever. <laughs> and part of the or whatever is that you don't take a new gross body, but you go to some heavenly sphere like Shiva Loka or Brahma Loka or Go Loka or Shakti Loka or any one of the subtle planets, uh, the Lakshmi Tantra calls it the pure creation. The pure creation is where there is no sin, there is no uh, ignorance. Everyone is self-realized. And it lasts without any destruction for the entire lifespan of the universe. Many, many billions of years. Many, many yuga cycles. Divya Yuga cycles. So, this place uh, is not really a place in the sense that in ordinary Jagra consciousness, we don't find these uh, as a location in our space. Uh, where can you go and see God? You know, this is a, a common challenge posed by atheists. Where is God? Can you show me God? You don't see God walking down the street. Where is God? Well, of course, because God does not exist in the gross state of consciousness. God is not a gross being. Although, sometimes, according to certain scriptures, God creates an incarnation, an avatar, who descends to this material world and carries out various activities as only he can uh, in his inimitable style, <laughs> which is that he knows things and does things that no human being possibly could. And some of these things apparently violate the laws of physics and so on. But then what's the answer to that? Well, the answer is it's a dream. It's something we're experiencing in Swapna consciousness. And Swapna and Jagrat consciousness are two different worlds, literally. Like when we go to sleep at night, what happens? We forget about the physical body. We forget about the senses, the world that they reveal, and all the stuff going on in it. And we find ourselves in a dream body, in a dream world. And this dream world is substantially different from the physical world, from the gross world. For example, there's no distance. There's no time. There is no such thing as a solid identity. One incident morphs into another incident in a completely weird and surprising way. And there doesn't seem to be any particular constraints on what can happen. <laughs> so it's wild. Anything can happen in a dream, isn't it? So when we dream, we actually go into a different world. Uh, certainly, at least you could say we go into a different dimension of consciousness. And this consciousness, this dream consciousness, reveals a different world, a mental world, a world where thoughts are real, where meaning is a thing, and so on, a subtle world. And in this world, our energy body becomes like a gross body. That's the grossest it gets. The phenomena of, for example, Kundalini, the subtle energy that is the mother of all, that gives birth to everything that we know of in the gross body as sex energy. Everybody worships her. Uh, she's the goddess. She is the Shakti. She's the one who gives life. Well, of course, in the subtle body, she's prana. 
Now, Prana, uh, Ramana Maharshi was famous for saying that Prana is imagination. It's just a thought. Well, we say just a thought, but thoughts are very powerful. Thoughts are what drives us. Thoughts are how we constrain our being. We say, oh, I couldn't do that, or I couldn't go there, you know, I couldn't have that, or, you know. We constrain our being by our thoughts. And what may seem perfectly reasonable and logical and clear at one time, common wisdom, you know, obvious to everybody, a few years later, could be completely opposite. Look at how the attitudes in society change over time. Just go back, you know, 50 or 100 years and read some newspaper articles and see how the mind changes. But you don't have to even do that. Look at your own mind and how your tastes and desires have changed since you were a child. Every child wants to grow up and be something great. Huh? If you ask a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't think any of them say uh, a cost accountant <laughs> or a garbage man. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> Some kids really do want to be garbage men when they grow up because they emulate any adult that they see as being powerful, influential, a force in their world. And garbage men with their loud, clanking trucks and all this are certainly an imposing presence and makes an impression on a young child. But nobody says, you know, uh, I want to be a, a stockbroker. You know, nobody says, I want to be uh, an assembly line worker when they're three years old. No, they want to be a jet pilot, an astronaut, a president. Huh? <laughs> they want to be something great. And so what is the greatest thing? What is the most amazing and greatest thing that we could imagine as an individual? That's having a relationship with God. So all religions, except maybe some weird atheistic or nihilistic branches of Buddhism or Jainism, uh, they posit that the human being, the, the being, the soul, the subtle part, huh? not the body that drops off after a while, but the real part, the part that remains, has an eternal relationship with God. Huh? This is the two. And yoga linking is about connecting the individual with the whole, with God. So this process of yoga leads us out of the gross world of Jagrat consciousness and into the world of thoughts or dreams. What is a mantra? A mantra is simply a device for focusing our mind on certain thoughts. Om Namah Shivaya. Huh? We want to think of Shiva. But what is Shiva? And we know from our research into consciousness that Shiva is Sushupti. Shiva is the void, emptiness. Huh? He is completely causal. He is not the effect of anything. And that's why when we go into deep sleep at night, there are no impressions, no experiences, because there's nothing to experience. There are no impressions because Shiva is only cause. He's never the effect of anything. That's what it means to be the supreme, the absolute. Huh? And, of course, behind Shiva is Turiya, Brahman, the unconditioned. But that's even a higher stage. We're going to talk about heaven, the spiritual world, and the pastimes in the spiritual world as being a subtle dimension of consciousness that exists in the same space that we normally call dreams. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.